Well, the robots have risen. It seems like everything in lawn care is automated anymore, and I've been just sort of weighing out on if you could go pretty much fully automated, get yourself to the point where you don't really do any lawn care anymore. Is it possible? It's closer than you think. Let's take a look. If you haven't had a chance to watch the video about these lawn trends for this year, just click up here. You can jump over to that. I'll also link it in the description below. And at the end of the video, you can go back and take a look because a lot of this is stemming from that conversation. So let's talk robo mowers first. I think that that's something that is just going to continue to catch on. And part of that is for this reason. With the expansion of homes and suburbs and areas where water is a little bit more I don't know, hard to come by, lawns are going to get smaller and smaller. And obviously with that and the cost of just home ownership anymore, people are less and less likely to even have the time to get out there to spend on their lawn to make it what they want. Couple that with how much technology is speeding up and uh, all of the conveniences that are out there already that are automated. If we're moving to autonomous driving in cars. I mean, you name it, right? It's, it's all there. What's to prevent this from being normal? Now, for the last few years, it's been very cost prohibitive. And still, there's some robo mowers out there that can be three and four thousand bucks. But the costs are starting to come down. And especially if you have a smaller lawn, it's kind of starting to make sense. You can be below the thousand dollar mark, have something mowing for you all the time and actually have a pretty good green space. So it looks as though this isn't just going to be a residential thing. The commercial side has gotten massive. A autonomous equipment is everywhere and all around us. And it's just going to keep becoming more and more prevalent from the professional side. A lot of that has to do with there's just not enough people who want to do the work anymore, which sort of leads me into one con of doing this. So I have two boys, nine years old. They'll be pushing 10 this year. Uh, I started them on the lawn last year, pushing around the uh, Toro 60 volt that I have. I want them to mow. I want them to know what it's like to mow. And I want them to be the robots that are out there to put it quite simply. They should know how to do this. And I even have a little bit of problem with them mowing with an electric mower. Now, I know that a lot of stuff is going that direction, but I would like them to be able to pull a spark plug and change oil and put gas in, you know, without spilling, that kind of thing. I think these are important skill sets that people need to learn because they're never going to go away. And just knowing that you can do some stuff and having some mechanical, I don't know, prowess and, and have that ability to learn, I think is a good thing. To go further into that and to just drive the point home. The other day I was driving in my truck. I was heading down to cut up some uh, old tote cages and things like that. And I saw the lights ahead on a highway patrolman. And it, there was a car that was seemed to be pulled over that probably had about six guys in there. I don't know, late teens to early 20s, all standing outside. Looked like it was going to be something fun, some sort of drama. It wasn't. The highway patrolman was changing their tire. That was so irritating. It was so irritating just to know that that's what is progressing right now, that a group of anybody can't just change a tire. They couldn't figure out how to jack the car up, find the tire, put the thing, right? Like that bugs me. And so on a lot of this like autonomous stuff, that stuff kind of bugs me. Now, that might just be old school thinking. Maybe I'm stuck in the past, but those are the kind of things that bother me a little bit about some of this stuff as it's moving forward. Having the skill to repair or replace, uh, knowing how to mow a straight line, you know, whatever. These, these are things that I see going away. And it is a little troublesome, even though this stuff is pretty cool. So let me flip over to the pro side of this whole thing. Not professional, but the pros and cons side. A good buddy of mine who works a lot and doesn't really have a lot of time to mow, he has had a Husqvarna for a little while. That thing cuts amazing. His lawn looks flat and flush. There's less weeds. It looks gorgeous. Wonderful. Fits perfect. It's a half an acre of mowing on a regular basis. It never stops. It's always going. And, he, you know, the turf looks great. 
So I think that's a real positive. You know, there's times where this is going to fit in and that's kind of more how I see the future going is that people are just going to have less time to do this. So as the technology increases and you know, we can get rid of the cables, which I don't know, I think actually cables are kind of a little bit better. The whole like GPS mapping could be, it's gonna get tighter, it's gonna work, but the technology is increasing and the cost is coming down. That's gonna make them more affordable. And I just see that being now more and more commonplace. And honestly, I wanna get one. I wanna get one and I wanna put it up there, I wanna let it go, but that just to see, just to see how that is, but I still wanna teach the kids how to mow. That means that they're gonna be learning how to do more precision type stuff because I'm gonna to have to put them out on the golf green. Anyway, I digress, let's move on to number two. So the next one is gonna be the smart sprinklers. Now this one I am actually very excited about. I, I think that the technology here is speeding up in a way that has needed to be sped up. And again, talking about from the water conservation side, from not hitting sidewalks, from all of this kind of thing, I think that the Era Green guys have a lock on this. I think that it's going to be something that other producers, manufacturers are gonna be chasing because it's smart and it's really smart. And um, if I were building a new home and my option was for a sprinkler system, I would pay the money for it right out of the gate just because it's so much simpler. Where you might have 24 or 30 heads in the past, you're gonna take it down to three or four. It's a totally different scenario on the way these things work. So I, I feel like we're going to see a lot more of that. So once you get all of your irrigation dialed in and, and you, now you've got your robo mower going, um, you know, you're not really wasting much water. You're not really, you know, spending any extra time now on mowing the lawn, you're kind of starting to turn into Marge Simpson a little bit, wondering what, what's the point of life. And, and I actually feel like that's sort of the reality is, you know, you can get to the point of, you're not really going to have to do much. You couple this with a smart timer, it's sending you text messages about things, error codes, whatever. You're just basically running an electronic lawn in the back. So really all then it comes down to is the third part of this to where essentially you're getting away from doing much lawn work at all. So that's gonna be something that is actually not new and really not any special technology until I go into the realm of sort of science fiction here in a second, but that's fertigation tanks. You know, a tank coupled to a system that's smart with a robo mower basically keeps you away from the lawn. Now you might say, well, how's that possible? You know, what about weed controls? What about this? What about the other? Well, that's one of the things about the robo mowers that's so great is because it's so frequently cutting turf, weeds don't really have time. They don't have enough uh, ability to grow out. You're sure you're gonna have some and maybe you're gonna have to deal with that occasionally, but your, your weed pressure is gonna go way, 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 way down. When you get your water dialed in and now you've got this thing that's out there on a regular basis, weeds don't stand much of a chance. It's just, you're not having the environmental stresses you wouldn't have the bare spots that you might have from little blank areas where a sprinkler wouldn't reach. You're kind of just covering off all these bases. And then now you're putting out your nutrition in a microfeeding standpoint through a fertigation system. Now, know that you do not put any chemicals through that whatsoever. There are no weed controls you put in a fertigation tank, no fungicides, no, don't do any of that. That is totally wrong and you, bleh, don't do it. It's just for nutrients and it comes out at such a micro dose that is constantly feeding all the time. So, you know, you take some of these new lawns that are going in that might be 1500 square feet or something, a small tank of, I don't know, maybe one and a third gallon. I know some are come, kind of coming that size or about this yay big. Not that you can tell what that looks like on your phone that you're probably watching on right now, but they're, they're about a foot, you know, maybe a six inch pipe is what they're made out of. So foot long, six inches wide. They don't really, they don't really take up a whole lot of space that could get filled one time in the season and microfeed all year with no trouble. Now, some of those take flowable powders and liquids. Some of them are liquids only. You, you kind of have options. So for those of you that don't like fertigation tanks, I know there's a lot of people trying to develop this sort of, I, I, I hesitate to say it, but sort of drone fertility machines. That's not anything that I think is going to come uh, to the homeowner market anytime soon, but let's just design one real quick, go into the realm of what's possible. So that way, when you do see one, you heard about it here first. I have a Roomba in the house with a tower that self empties and that thing, um, 
I loved it in the beginning. Now it seems like it's reached the age of retirement. It just doesn't seem to do what it's supposed to anymore. Like it backs up and it's like, yeah, I don't feel like it today. And then it goes back to its station. However, that thing got me thinking, if you were to have, I don't know, one of these small little auto mowers, um, you wouldn't really need to carry a whole lot of weight that went to a tower that you could fill up once a season with a 40 or 50 pound bag of furt. It could load in a couple of pounds and it could actually track where it's fertilizing and it could do it all the time. And that thing could just take a few pounds onto its, into a little hopper and just drop little prills here and there. No trouble. There you go. A million billion dollar idea. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the market is for this stuff, but if you're out there and you're a designer, first one in, just remember John said it first. So, you know, think about that for a second. It is possible to do one on the backs of some of these mowers that would just be putting out micro feeding on a regular basis, even with granular. So it's all possible. At this point, you could have a completely programmable lawn that you don't really have to do anything but enjoy. That's pretty wild. But I still don't know if it's a good thing. So for me, while I might dip my toe into some of this stuff and start to really look into it and implement some of it on my own lawn, I gotta just remember what is analog? You know, what what out there is the feel, touch, the smell of fuel even, I mean, all of that stuff, like hand sharpening the reel and, and doing all that, those, what could eventually become lost. A lot to think about but there's also a lot of really cool stuff going on so that's really it as we go on through the season we'll explore some more of this stuff and some more of the options and some more of the tech that's coming out and just try to stay right up on the front of it but maybe it is time comment below is it time is it time to adopt a fully automatic lawn <laughs>